James Thomas, Morning Blend. Today, we're going to be talking about the movies opening this weekend, and we're going to start off with Bones and All. Uh, and Janelle, I'll let you go first because you had fun with it. Go ahead, Janelle. Oh, I got, pun intended, bitten by the fact that I had not seen the trailer before I saw this movie. Um, yeah, it was about um, 10 minutes in, it grabs you and doesn't let go. Um, really sinks your teeth into that entire plot. Um, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, it's, yeah. Um, now, aside from that, <laughs> if you were to take a movie about um, early 20s love story about two broken individuals, and let's say you had them addicted to heroin. They were just broken. They never thought they were worthy of love. It's that kind of story. You just have to replace the heroin addiction with another type of addiction. And there you got it. <laughs> so if you were to take yourself out of the fact of the horror of what you're seeing, it is a, I would say, a pretty standard um, <laughs> millennial love story <laughs> sure god i hope not <laughs> Tony, let's hear what you got to say let's see you sink your teeth into this <laughs> well for me this didn't come out of left field uh, i've been looking forward to this luca guadagnino is he's definitely been on my radar for the last uh, five or so years and every time he, he you know it doesn't fail to deliver and this time i agree um it's a classic coming of age tale Similar to that of, of uh, where the crawdads sing in a certain kind of way. I don't want to give too much away, uh, but someone off on their own. And uh, there's just a little bit of a dark and uh, deeply unsettling twist to it with the whole cannibalism aspect. But what I really appreciated was uh, Guadagnino, he, what he does is he really builds that world. He doesn't just say, you know, cannibals, this, that, and the other. I mean, he really kind of gets down to it as to maybe not why they're that way but that they're certainly not alone and that there's, it's just something that you deal with in society. And, uh, you know, Janelle and I talked after we saw it and uh, you'll never go to the grocery store or a supermarket or, you know, a drugstore the same way. Um, because if you get looked at by a stranger, you, you're really going to wonder why now. Um, but, you know, I, I, I did really enjoy it. We'll break it down a little bit. James, I want to hear your thoughts. Wow. Uh, yeah, I love the comment, sink your teeth into it. And yeah, mm -hmm. it, it really takes a bite out of you. <laughs> I love those two comments. Uh, again, it was a very strange and interesting movie. It was a little scary. Um, and to me, it was, again, it was two mixed up millennials who are lost and they find each other. It was just interesting how they found each other <laughs> in this whole kind of scary thing. You're right. I'm going to be very uh, cautious on people that I meet from now on. <laughs> Whether they have shark teeth or not, I'm going to be very cautious at meeting people. We've given a lot of away in our conversation about Bones and all this uh, very interesting movie that that's is by uh, directed by Luca. How do you say his? Guadagnino? Guadagnino. Guadagnino, okay. And uh, you got to talk about Taylor Russell. I thought she was great. Timothy Chalamet, you know, he is the heartthrob for young millennial women. Uh, Andrea Holman was in it. Uh, it was Jessica Harper, David Gordon Green. It was really good. And Mark Rylance, uh, who, the very spooky character. And it was very interesting. It, it Really, for this particular movie, Bones and All, I, I, I hate to say it, you guys are going to disagree with me on that. I'm pretty sure, especially Janelle. I'm going to give it a four because I think the millennials are going to like this movie. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I agree with you. I think it's a four. Um, I don't have any, um, yeah, I don't have any disagreement with that. It's just, it just, it, 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 it certainly highlighted, I mean, as a woman, you're already scared kind of walking around just in general. Um, there's a whole new other element now that I've got to put out there. I'm hoping my tattoos keep me off the um, the um, the food menu. chain or the food pyramid for a certain group. But um, yeah. It could be dressy or spicy. They don't know. <laughs> I, I hope it's a little, I hope I'm a little sour. Just, <laughs> yeah, so I would agree with you. I would say four. It's like, it's, 
it the 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 villain in it <laughs> if you can actually get worse as a cannibal um yeah he's i think he's yeah i think he's yeah. very electric in it yeah Tony? Jamie you started to touch on it taylor russell's phenomenal uh, you know timothy chalamet we expect to be great in everything and he and luca luca have a really good relationship but taylor russell really is the star of the show um but i but you mentioned you touched on it i have to continue further mark rylance this is probably the most memorable role of his career for me um and i'm not gonna be shocked if he gets a best supporting actor nomination he is that polarizing in the amount of range he shows and just the, the steps he takes in, in this uh with this character and i really hope people give it a go just for that reason alone um but you know it's it's loving the time of cannibalism um for me also four out of five there's some gore for those that are concerned I didn't think it was too gory. Sure, you know, there's going to be some, <laughs> uh, but I think there's a lot more suggestive suggestive gore than there could have been than there was actual on-screen gore. But it's not for everybody. There's a lot. It does take more to develop. Um, but again, Luca Guadagnino has another another strong film on his hands. All right, consensus is four. Let's going to move on, and we're going to talk about the movie we got to see the other night, uh, The Fablemans. We all got to see that. So... Tony, you go ahead and get started with the Fablemans. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is your best picture front runner. It's a beautiful, moving, family-driven drama that just so happens to be directed by Steven Spielberg about his upbringing. It is just perfectly casted. I'll, I'll let other people touch on that. Uh, but it, it just, from start to finish, it's two and a half hours long, but it feels nowhere near the sort. It's, it is, it's just fantastic. Oh, me? Yeah. <laughs> no, I just piggybacking on what Tony said. It, it, I had my um, concerns going in, knowing it was two and a half hours. Um, I thought, oh gosh, here we go. And I can't remember a scene where I felt like it dragged. There was always something happening. There was, there was always something happening in that movie. There was never just a slow moment. Like even if, uh, even the slow moments had their purpose and just kind of got you to the next scene. I think the cast was amazing. I think everybody was down to even the small roles of the sisters were, even they were perfect. I think Michelle Williams is, I couldn't get enough of her scenes. I, Judd Hirsch, I think he came in like a kamikaze pilot, <laughs> blew in, blew out, and just was, he, he literally blew up the entire, he kind of, set in motion or kind of verbalized what was about to happen in the rest of the movie. So I, yeah, it was, I think it was great. I have to agree with you. Uh, I enjoyed Paul Dano and his character because I've seen him in other movies. Uh, Seth Rogen was surprised for me. I actually did not recognize him at first. It took me a minute. So yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Michelle Williams did a great job in this. Uh, and, 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 and my 16 year old kid, I mean, that guy was, I mean, I enjoyed him. I, I, I loved his high school memories, everything that happened to him. I mean, what doesn't happen to a nerdy, intelligent, or, you know, artsy kid in any high school? <laughs> They're kind of like the outcast, but they see everything. They know everything. And in that uh, high school, uh, what they call a ditch day film, uh, that was perfect. It kind of gave you exactly what the film was about, who the individual was and who the director was of this film. <laughs> and it, you know, it just kind of gave you that, that magic of how he saw life and how some people do see life. You know, we are movie critics. We are out in the field every day. We get to see all these great movies, but Fable Men, I, I have to agree with you, was a pretty good film. It kind of gave you that insight, that vision of a filmmaker and life itself. So, and can I say, I'm sorry. Can I also say it showed actually how gracious he is about his memories and about the people involved in them. He could have really spun it, the people in his life, depending on how true to fact it all is, you know, whether or not it was just for screen or 
true to life, there are people in that movie that he could have spun in a completely different way. And all except for one individual who deserves it, and I'm not gonna give it away, um, he treats everybody super graciously. Mm -hmm. Everybody is highlighted in a loving, just some, you know, that brings something forth to his life in a positive light, no matter how faulty and flawed they are. He's very gracious to everybody that's in his history. Okay, what would you give it then, Janelle? Um, I would give it a five out of five. Um, I, I Like I said, I don't, there was no scene that didn't feel like it, it there was no, no purpose. There was like no scene that had no purpose in it. They were, everything was, everything just kept going and moving. And like I said, it two and a half hours, it did not feel like it. It was continuous. There were just constant things happening. Um, not in like over dramatic, some weren't over dramatic, just uh, just little pieces of the puzzle of who he is. So yeah, I would say five out of five. Tony? Absolutely agree, five out of five. I mean, we touched on it a little bit. It could have been so self-serving and a, and a humble a brag piece, but it was so humble. It was moving. It was genuine. It was done just masterfully so for an autobiographical film. Um, it gives us a glimpse into his early genius. It shows there's a scene there. I'm not going to get into what, but you're sitting there wondering how he did something at such a young age. And when he tells you, you know, what he did, it just seems like common sense, but not anything any of us thought of as what could have been the reason. Um, you know, and the one thing I'm talking about, Steven Spielberg, who is one of the most important, you know, people in cinema history, not just our time. But his, there's such a familial connection to all of his films. And now, given this, you see why. Family was such an important part of his life. But it's such a great film for the whole family. I, I can't recommend it enough. It's, it's just phenomenal film. All right, Steven Spielberg, Tony Kushner, you heard it so far, five, two fives. I'm going to give it four and a half out of five. I'll be that one person because there were a couple of scenes in there that kind of dragged for me a little bit. Um but overall, I have to agree with you. It was very well done. Told a great story. Uh, looking forward to seeing Gabrielle LaBelle in a few more movies. I think that's a very uh, new and upcoming young man. Uh, he's going to be great. It's going to be really interesting. Okay, so there it is. I guess the consensus is going to have to be. Go ahead, Janelle. You're going to say it. What? You look like you were ready to say something. Go ahead. You know what? All right. So you guys overrule. It's going to be a five. It's definitely going to be a five. So we've always talked about uh, Bones and all, Janelle. And we just talked about the Fablements. Thank you for joining us on Morning Wind. We'll see you next week. Have a great Thanksgiving, St. Louis. And Tony and Janelle, have a great Thanksgiving. You as well. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. And Janelle, make sure you feed the dogs. They're, they're well fed. <laughs>